last week, his subject was listening, learning to seek God. And so uh, tonight for a few moments, I want to kind of stay in that vein and kind of challenge us to go a little deeper. Um, now that we know how to seek the Lord, I believe the next step is asking God to open our ears. So tonight we're going to talk about open my ears so that we can um, hear him clearly. In fact, I can't um, really stress enough how important it is or how critical it is that we learn how to hear him and hear him clearly. And we've talked about this before, but I think the times that we live in right now are so important and so uh, critical that we need to make sure that we are hearing God clearly. Amen. So Prophet Donnie gave us four questions last week to think about. Uh, question number three was, what do I seek God about? And so tonight, I believe I have a corporate answer um, to that question. You, If you've gone over those questions, then you may have a personal one, but I believe tonight I have a corporate one. And um, I think that we should simply ask God to teach us to hear, ask him to fine tune our ears, uh, to hear without all the static around us, with all the other voices around us, with all the other noise uh, around us, and even our own thoughts. Um, we need to ask God to teach us how to hear beyond that. And so especially during these um, unprecedented times, I believe it is critical now more than ever, and certainly uh, in my lifetime, to develop a hearing so that we understand what is happening around us. And more importantly, we know how to respond in kind. So the word here in Hebrew is shama, S-H-A-W dash M-A-H, shama. And it means to listen, to attend, to pay attention, to monitor, to hark, and to heed. So shama means to hear and hear intelligently so we need to ask god to teach us how to hear correctly and teach us how to hear intelligently paul says in romans seven twenty five. so then with the mind i myself serve the law of god god being able to hear godly i'm sorry being able to hear god clearly why because with the mind we serve god so we need to serve and we need to hear god intelligently we need to ask god to teach us because we serve an intelligent god this is an intelligent salvation and so we need to make sure that we're hearing god clearly and we're hearing god intelligently so godly or being able to hear god clearly is a learned skill Okay, it's not something that you come out of the womb doing. It's not even something that's automatic upon salvation. Now, the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, all of those things are automatic. They are the benefits of salvation. But hearing is one of the promises of God, as stated in Jeremiah 35, 3, which says, Call me and I will answer you. I will tell you great and mighty things, okay? So one of the responsibilities, I believe, of the leadership of any house is to teach the people how to see God, which um, Prophet Donnie did so eloquently last week, and um, how to correctly hear his voice, okay? So after we've led people uh, to Christ as their personal savior, we walk them through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I honestly believe that our next, next task is to really teach people how to hear his voice this is important because knowing his voice and being led by the spirit of god will literally save your life so when i ask the lord um, when bishop texts me and asks me to teach tonight and i ask the lord what did he want me to teach about he said stretch the point stretch the point of hearing me so that's what we're going to talk about tonight so the very familiar passage in scripture you guys know this john 10 27 says my sheep and this is the uh, NIV version. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So what does Jesus do in this chapter? Is he compares real sheep with spiritual sheep. Sheep, I mean, shepherds had very long hours in the field. 
okay? They spent all of their time with the sheep. They washed them, they trimmed them, they rounded them up, they moved them from pasture to pasture, they protected them from predators, and it was a dirty job, but a very important job. And as we read throughout the Old Testament, we see that the measure of a man's wealth was the number of his sons and daughters, especially his sons and his cattle. So Job 1, I'm going to give you an example, Job 1, 1 and 3, and I'm going to read this real quick. It says, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. And he had seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. So a man in those days, his wealth, the measure of his wealth was the number of sons and daughters he had and the number of cattle that he had. And so these, these shepherds knew their sheep so well. They knew um, them individually. They knew their markings. They knew the individual sounds of their bleeding in the field. They knew their gait, meaning how they walked, how they moved about. They knew when they were sick. They knew when they were tired. They knew when they were hungry. And the sheep, in turn, knew the voice of the shepherd. And you have to remember, if you can kind of cast your mind into what an open field looked like, there were other um, shepherds out there with their other sheep, but one group of sheep didn't follow the shepherd a couple of feet away. Why? They were not familiar with his voice. They didn't know his voice, but they spent enough time with one shepherd to know his voice just as well as he knew them. And so that is the shepherd that they would follow. And so God compares uh, literal sheep, real sheep with spiritual sheep, meaning we as sheep know our shepherd's voice. We should know the voice of the Lord. Amen. And it's a voice that we are clear about. We're not following of the voices, our, our ears should be so fine-tuned in hearing God that we know when other people are in error. We know when people aren't saying correctly. So we know above all other voices, including our own. Okay. So we need to spend time with him, as Prophet Donnie said last week, seeking God um, and spending time with him. And people that are married, you know that the sound of your spouse's voice. You spend enough time with your spouse. Um, you know, you guys have hung out together, you talk, whatever. And so if they even try to pretend or play a game on you and kind of disguise their voices, you know the inflections and the sound of their voices so much that you can say, oh, that's, that's Wesley. Oh, that's David. Oh, that's Sam. Why? Because you spent so much time with them that you know their voice and they can't pull the wool over your head. They can't pretend to be someone else. They have spent so much time with you that literally you can't fool them. And so that's how we have to, to be with God. We need to know God so well and we need to know his voice so well that we know the inflections when God speaks and we know the tone of God and, and we know how he sounds in, in certain situations. And so it should be the same in how we follow the Lord. And so it's important that we spend time with him so that we can sharpen our hearing. So how do we do that? Yes, we can read the word of God sharpens our hearing. Building ourselves up on our most holy faith sharpens our hearing. Why? Well, the Bible says faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing of the word of God. So from his word, we get to learn the vernacular of the kingdom. We get to learn how God would speak and, and we get to learn how God would sound. So this is why it's so important for us to learn how to hear the voice of the Lord and to know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you individually and speaking corporately. So if the shepherd does not give direction to the sheep, they'll wander off. They'll get lost. They'll become the meal of some wild animal somewhere. They'll get hurt. They'll die of starvation or thirst. So every believer needs to seek God regarding the ability to hear intelligently, especially in the times that we live in now. I, you know, one of my devotions one morning, I, I, I was reading this, this chapter and the Holy Ghost just really began to talk to me and he reminded me of this. So you guys are familiar with this. It's in 1 Chronicles 12 where we see the formation of David's army in Ziglag. And it gives a list of how many men of valor joined David. And I sitting there one morning and did the math. So it was 3,001, 722 men of valor from all over the region that aligned themselves with David 
to help him fight the Lord's battle. But what was so interesting is that if you go down to verse 32, it says that 200 men from the sons of, a, of the tribe of Issachar were chosen to live and work alongside David. They weren't warriors. They never went out to fight. Okay, they had no military skill. Their only job was to hear, to give divine instruction to David, to watch as well as pray. The Bible tells us to watch as well as pray. Okay, so the Bible goes on to say that these 200 men knew the times, they knew the seasons of Israel, they knew at every given moment what Israel should do, and they were sent specifically to give divine supernatural counsel to David, to hear on his behalf, and they advised him on all issues and addressed all types of concerns. So even though God and David were on speaking terms, and we know that, God um, called David the sweet psalmist of Israel. We know that David talked to God, but God sent these men who had God's ears, 200 men who did nothing more but spend time in prayer, watching the surroundings, listening, discerning the day and the times, and giving godly instruction. So when we read that passage or hear it taught, the first thing many of us think about is that is, is um, related to those who maybe operate in the prophetic office, okay? But might I suggest to you tonight that that verse was included in the narrative of David because God wanted us to see how important it is to hear. It's not just relegated to those in prophetic office, but he wants us to hear, see, and understand the times in which we live, just like the sons of Issachar. Our eyes and our ears must be fine-tuned to hear God and follow his lead in every area of our lives. So God wants everybody to develop the type of sight line and hearing that only comes from spending time in his presence and allowing the Holy Spirit to deeply develop in us ears to hear. So why is it so important to make sure that we're hearing God clearly and we're hearing God intelligently? Number one, it will diminish your capacity for error. It will diminish your capacity for error. This is so important. How many of us have wasted time, money, energy on stuff that just didn't matter, didn't make sense? We just wasted all of this time. And we knew that we wasted time. And time is something that we can never recoup. But if we spent time in the presence of the Lord, if we spent time really hearing him and understanding his ear, um, we wouldn't waste so much time. We wouldn't waste it so much money because we live in very dangerous times. Come on, it's, it can be very scary times, even though we have faith in God and we believe in God. These are very uncertain times. And so you cannot successfully remove these times without hearing God on what to do. Amen. Bishop Coletta Vaughn wrote a song called There Is a Flow. And the chorus is teach us to hear, teach us to listen, whether it's over there, over there, over here, over there. What is she talking about? The voice of the Lord. Whether it's over there, 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 or there. Teach us, dear Lord, to enter in, what? Into your presence so that we can hear. And so, again, it will diminish your capacity for error. And that's in, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> every area of your life. And I really want to stress the times in which we live in how critical it is that we have an ear to hear. Okay, there's so much uncertainty right now. The, the, the murder raid and the violence has escalated. People are marching. Things are happening all around the world. And so we need to make sure that we're hearing God to know what to do, when to do, not to be so quick to rush out into things, but understand that God will lead us and guide us the Holy Spirit promises to lead us and guide us into all truth. And so we need to develop an ear to hear God to know exactly what it is that he wants us to do. I mean, something as simple as don't go to Acme today. Wait until tomorrow. The Holy Ghost says to you, don't go. I shared this story one time in LIT. I was on my way to church. And, you know, it's just, just a simple thing of, of, of being able to hear God. And I went to prayer that morning. So there are two ways that I can get to church from where I live. I can go around Cobb Street Parkway or go down 58th Street to Cobb Street Parkway and go around. And when I got to the light to turn to go to Cobb Street Parkway, I heard the Holy Ghost say, go 58th Street. I'm like, ah, I went that way this morning. I'm just going to go, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go this way. So I'm sorry, I heard the Lord say, go Cobb's Creek. And I said, no, I'm going to go 58th Street just for a change of scenery. 
got down to 58th Street, when you turn left on 58th Street, you can see the train tracks. There is a freight train that runs through Southwest. As soon as I turned the corner, cars were backed up to the corner and I could see the lights of the train. But I heard the Lord say, go Cobb Street Parkway. Not so, I may not have been an accident or anything, but a simple instructions. He was a, keeping me from getting into a, um, a, a long line because those freight trains over there are very long. And so it's simple things. We have to learn to hear God in simple things because he'll test us in small things first. He might say, and I remember this was recently. I came home one day and I was really tired. I had dishes in the sink. And I said, I wash them in the morning. The Holy Ghost said, wash them now. So I washed the dishes now. Why? I didn't have company coming by or anything. He just said, wash them now. I washed them, I dried them, I put them away. Hearing God in the little things, okay? So it will diminish your capacity for error in your life. Secondly, it will literally save your life. I remember hearing the story of a man who was supposed to get on the flight. You guys remember 9-11, the plane that went down in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. He got to the airport and he, he said something just told him to switch his flight time. And he did. I don't know if the man was saved or not, but he followed his first mind. That plane went down to Shikesville. That was flight number 93 out of New York, going to Washington, D.C., and it was blown out of the sky. Now, suppose he had not followed that voice that he heard. He would have died. And so hearing God will save your life. You know, I was coming from some place and got caught downtown in the protest. Okay, I ended up having to go all around everywhere to try to get back on 76. And, and you know, it was, it was that, that day that they were uh, shooting um, tear gas on, on uh, the Vine Street Parkway and all that kind of stuff. And I just, I just got a little kind of bedazzled, I guess. And so I just followed this one car and he just went around in love the way and I was able to get back on. But uh, hearing the voice of God will save your life. We sometimes are just too casual. We're just too familiar with what we do. We don't ask for direction. We don't ask for guidance. God, should I go here? Should I go there? What do you want me to do? We're so used to taking our lives in our own hands that we don't realize how many times we could have died. But by the grace of God, there's so much going on around us right now. We must be careful to hear God and know that God is leading us. And so we have to be sure that we're hearing God about everything in our lives right now. Okay, the next thing is that it will define or redefine your walk with the Lord. It will be evident to others if you are carnal <laughs> or if you are devout. Okay, you can be saved, attend church, and be carnal meaning the things of God are not important to you. The weightiness of God, you don't carry the weight of God. You just, you just go to church, you just do all the things that you think a Christian could do, but there is no light, there's no testimony, there's no, as, as Daniel often says, there's no oil on your life, okay? So you could straddle the fence in your behavior, in your thinking, in your choices, and your, in your decisions, okay? And your life will be a failure simply because you have not trained your ear to hear God. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And so you must develop an ear to hear God. Next, it will keep you in peace during times of trouble. All this that's going on around us now, we should have a peace in God. I know Christians who were scared to death, who were panicking, who were like, they just thought the world was coming to an end because we were in a pandemic. But if the Bible says, I'll keep you in perfect peace. If your mind is stayed on me, if your ear is hope open to hear at the beginning of this pandemic, God was given specific instructions. How many of us were able to hear that helped us walk through this thing? and walk through it successfully. Not fretting, not crying, not scared, not go here, not going there, but just resting in the Lord because we knew it was God and we knew he was in control. Why? We developed ears to hear. And so we weren't scared. We weren't afraid. We just patiently sat back, come on, and waited on the Lord. Okay, God, what are you gonna do next? What do you want me to do next? So it will keep your mind in perfect peace. Why? Because God will give you instructions every step of the way. 
I shared this on the call. One morning I was on my walk and I was praying about something. And the Holy Ghost said, I was asking him a question. He said, there's a wisdom for the day. And he wasn't talking about the calendar day. He was talking about the seasons, the time. And I said to the Lord, during this quarantine, what do you want me to do? And God just began to give instruction for my day. Why? There is instruction in the presence of the Lord. If we hear, God will instruct. God will design your day. There was not one day I was scared. There was not one day I didn't have provision. There was not one day my bills didn't get paid. God provided because as I listened to him, I did what he told me to do. And so I have been peaceful, praise God, during this whole um, quarantine. Even got a job during quarantine. Come on, don't tell me God don't work. Why? Because I rested in him. I trusted in him. I wasn't afraid. Okay, God, you got It's nothing I can do about it. All I can do is trust in you, wait on you, and listen for you to give instruction during this time. So God will definitely give you peace as you trust him and as you learn to hear his voice. Lastly, um, um, hearing God will sharpen your relationship with him. James 2.23 says that Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. That's the NIV version. Okay. It'll sharpen your relationship with God. I hear people all the time. Bishop says it and different people that I've heard talk about marriage, that the number one key in marriage is what? Communication. It's important that couples communicate, right? Same thing with your relationship with the Lord. You must communicate with him, okay? It will sharpen your relationship with him. It will put both of you all on the same plane. You'll hear him, he will hear you. It will credit you, as Abraham did, to righteousness, and God will call you his friend. So it will sharpen your relationship with him. It's no different in the natural, in the natural, so in the spiritual. You spend time with people, you have friends, you have platonic friends, you have husbands, you have girlfriends. The more time you spend with them, what, the better you get to know them. They know you, you know them, they know your likes, your dislikes. I mean, they, they know you, they, they know your, your, your reflections. I mean, they know your, your favorite colors. They know what, what's, what's fun to you. They get to know you. I posted something on Facebook last week. I saw somebody else post it, so I copied it. I thought it would be fun. And it says, if you were to bring me three things to cheer me up, what would you bring? And I said, only people that really know me can answer this. And it was about 12 people that posted and everything they wrote on it was right. Somebody wrote a good worship service, a good nail tech, and coffee. That's me. <laughs> you know, so the more you get to know people, the better you are in relating to them. So the more we get to know God, the more time we spend with God, the clearer our hearing is. Amen. The clearer our hearing is. And so now there's this relation, this ongoing relationship. Like you talk to him, he talks to you, and everybody has their own way of talking with the Lord. The way I talk to him is not the way Bishop talks to him, it's not the way Wendy talks to him, it's not the way Danielle talks to him, but you develop your own vernacular in your conversation with God. But it takes a trained ear to do that. So I'm almost done. Amen. So common ways that God talks to us, common ways that we can develop a hearing to God. Number one is his word. We have got to read his word. Okay. To know him is to know his word. Okay. To know him, I'm going to say it again, is to know his word. Spend time reading. Spend time praying. Ask God to open up the eyes of your understanding when you read. Just don't flop the Bible open and read the first passage that comes along. Every day I ask God in my devotional time, where are we going today? What do you want me to read today? What do you want to say today? Asking God, what to do and how to function in your daily or even in the word of god god what do you want to read what do you want me to read today what do you want to say to me today one morning i said to god let's talk what do you want to say to me today and the lord took me to a particular passage of scripture so we develop an understanding of who god is and the way he does things by reading his word next we hear god through other people there are other people that have spoken into our lives, and it's not just people who are prophetic. And you can be talking to somebody, have a general conversation with somebody, and all of a sudden hear God. Why? Your ear is fine too. You can hear God in, a, in, in talking to a child. You can hear God in listening to a radio. You can hear God. I know I get a lot of, of, of messages, or, or God speaks to me a lot in movies. I love movies. 
So other things, other people can speak into your life and hear, and you can hear God. They speak as an oracle of God. But we've got to fine tune our ears to know who's speaking and when they're speaking, because we can't accept everything from everybody. But as you get to know God, as you fine tune your ear, God will tell you whose word you can trust. Next, our circumstances. God will talk to us through our circumstances. And it, it could be good, bad, or indifferent, but God has a way of, 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 of allowing circumstances to crowd in on us and, and open up our ear gates so we can hear what God is saying. And we have to be very sensitive to what's going on around us. Whether you're at home, you're at work, you're out in the community, you're out with friends, develop a sensitivity of people. Again, it will save good life circumstances will bring us into the hearing of the Lord if we allow ourselves to be, if our, we allow our hearing to be developed. Next, God will speak to us in a still, small voice. I know what the voice of God sounds like to me. And as I said before, how I hear God is different than how you hear God. And the interesting thing about it is his voice sounds like yours. I used to think it sounded like James Earl Jones. No, God's voice sounds like yours. But it's a very distinct difference. I know when I'm sensing, like the old saints used to say, I know when I get an unction in the Holy Ghost and when it's me. I know when God is speaking, when it's me. Why well, I've developed an ear to know my voice from his voice. And his voice is very distinct and very clear in my spirit. And last of all, the actual voice of God. And, I, and that kind of ties into what I just talked about. You have to ask God to teach you to hear him. What does his voice sound like to you? What does God sound like? So you could be downtown in the midst of a riot, but hear God because you have fine-tuned your ear to hear him. He might say to you, okay, go down Chestnut Street, get off a of market quickly. Music blaring, people yelling and screaming, but you hear God clear enough to walk down the street to the next block and walk in safety. So all of these things are really important. Amen. In developing an ear to hear God. And so I pray tonight that you got something out of this because I really think that it's important for us. And as I said before, especially in the times that we live right now, that we must develop a hearing to hear God correctly and to hear God intelligently. Because the Bible says it's with our minds, it's with our intellect that we serve God. We follow him, we serve God with our spirit, with our heart, but he is an intelligent God. And so our approach to him must have an, an intellect to it. And so God is open and willing and ready and wanting to speak to us, but we must develop the kind of ear that we can hear God clearly, hear him succinctly, and hear him intelligently. Amen? Amen. So I am done. If anybody has any questions, you can put them in the chat. And um, Bishop, if nobody has questions, I'll turn it back over to you. Well, thank you, Pastor Vanessa, and we'll um, entertain any questions. Anybody have any questions? Good stuff. Just good stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, good word, Pastor Vanessa. Thank you. God bless you. You inspired me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Put at the bar. This this kind of tied in with the message on Sunday too. Mm -hmm. uh, when pandemic yeah. academic. When you mentioned that hearing him intelligently, and yes. so we really do. It's something that we have to develop. Something that we have to work on uh, in order to be a a good scholar or mm -hmm. a skilled. A skilled person, Absolutely. you know, he's calling for skilled men mm -hmm. and women. Mm -hmm. So, I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You Amen. wouldn't necessarily uh, equate hearing with intelligence, you know. And um, mm -hmm. so, I like that. that whole <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And what came back to me was you probably remember um, Apostle Hall, whenever she prays, she says, Shema, teach us to hear intelligently. And I heard mm -hmm. that when I was preparing this. Mm -hmm. And I looked up the word, and that's part of it is to be able to really hear and hear correctly. But she says that all the time, Shema, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I decree that the people will hear intelligently. And, and we do, we have to take an intelligent approach mm -hmm. when hearing uh, the word of the Lord. Because look, there's so many voices out there. There's so yes. much stuff <laughs> online, so much yes. stuff on the radio, so much stuff around you that you have to know it's God. And right. the only the way voices. to do that is to develop that kind of hearing and that, mm -hmm. that biblical scriptural intellect to know mm -hmm. the difference between, you know, when people are correct and when they're in error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you also for saying that we can become very casual when you're, when you're used to, not even used to, when you think you're used to hearing God, you mm -hmm. can have a certain, not even, for lack of a better term, disrespect. <laughs> almost mm -hmm. like you're entitled to hear it. And I think that was mm -hmm. um, Samson's issue. He was, he yes. was <laughs> always getting out of stuff. And mm -hmm. then when it was time to, to really adhere to the voice of God, he just thought it was a casual thing. And so mm -hmm. I thank you for saying that because it reminds us to have a certain reverence right. um, and a care and a, mm -hmm. con uh, like you said, a weight um, mm -hmm. for, for the voice of God and hearing mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor Vanessa, I just wanted to say, um, when you were talking about how hearing God can save your life, that is absolutely mm -hmm. true. And I haven't ever probably really shared my testimony with um, Household of Faith, but um, before I got in Christ uh, back in 2004, I was in a, a car accident where I was literally hit as a pedestrian. Oh, my Baltimore. God. Mm -hmm. And I was at work in D.C., and uh, it was raining. It was two days after the election, the re-election of Bush. It was just a dreary day. It was a down day, and I remember specifically um, my coworkers. I worked for the American Indian um, Alaska Native Branch of Head Start, and they had just built a new museum across the street from where I worked, and all my coworkers were like, come on, we're going to go over to the museum, blah, 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 and I could just feel in my spirit that the Lord was saying no. Mm -hmm. I was a black woman. I had an afro that day. I was like, oh, no, you know, my hair is already out. It's raining. No, I'm not really feeling it. They were like, no, come on. We really want, you know, the whole team is going to go, blah, blah, blah. And I let them twist my arm, mm -hmm. and I went. Mm -hmm. I went over mm -hmm. to the museum. I got sick. Mm -hmm. And as I was coming back, because I, I, wasn't, I was already not feeling it, I was coming back, going through the crosswalk, and an a SUV hydroplaned into me. Mm -hmm. Wow. My body flew into the back of the van. Jesus. That's an imprint in the van. And I remember waking up underneath the van, like, what happened? Oh what happened? And so, I, um, thankfully, God's grace, um, I only had a fractured pelvis. Mm -hmm. But I remember being in the hospital at GW, and, and every news station was talking about pedestrians being hit in a, hit in a car, hit, hit by a car, and all of them died. Mm -hmm. So I remember that was kind of like my Damascus moment where I was like, okay, mm -hmm. I got to get serious about God. That was really when I decided mm -hmm. to be serious about the Lord. And so, yes, like that was when I was like, okay, I have to really listen to that voice that mm -hmm. I didn't know was God. I thought it was just whatever, your conscience, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and really follow that voice. So I thank mm -hmm. you for this. Amen. 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 I, I, think, I think a lot of times we hear the, that voice and our flesh wants to overrule it, you know, because um, I had been in a situation where the Lord told me not to go. I mean, I heard him say it and I shook my head and said, I'm going anyway. Yeah. Worst mistake I ever made. Like you mm -hmm. said earlier, I, it was devastating. So, so much so that I had thought about killing myself after what I had done. That's, that's how devastating it was. And all I had to do was acknowledge that it was me and was what I wanted to do. And I felt as though it was right. But, mm -hmm. you know, just, just the fact that my father in heaven said, this girl, I'm going to have to show her what I mean. Mm -hmm. I got really saved right after that. <laughs> really saved. I had been praying before. But after that, mm -hmm. he didn't have to worry about this girl no more. She, <laughs> had a, she truly had a made up mind then. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Hey, I, and I, 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 oh, go ahead. Somebody's gonna say something. This is Donnie. Uh -huh. um, no. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> so um, I, I just wanted to know if, um, since, since we're kind of like um, in, in the flow, right? Um, kind of like just in that same vein. If I could maybe um, offer a, a exercise, some homework 
that we can perhaps maybe call come back on you know maybe at the next bible study or something like that mm -hmm. and and so the, you know this is for you know individuals who are developing like really beginning stages mm -hmm. and this is going to be real simple we do it at the school of prophets and what you're going to do is when you wake up in the morning and get dressed, you're gonna ask the Lord, what color shirt does he want you to wear? <laughs> mm -hmm. You're gonna ask the Lord, what color shirt? You're gonna wear that shirt. You're gonna put that, you're gonna put that shirt on, and perhaps maybe if you were quarantining, if you can go out, maybe take a walk, but you gotta get out the house in order to do this if you're able. Um, but if you go on a walk, you're gonna see every individual with that same color shirt on. <laughs> Every individual is <laughs> <laughs> the wrong way. <laughs> Every individual with that same color shirt on, what you're going to do is you're going to ask the Lord for a word. Or ask the Lord, what does he want you to pray for that person about? You don't have to go up to that person if you're not led. You're just going to pray for that person that's wearing that same color shirt to you. And hey, if it's God's divine intervention that you just so happen to speak to that person or get a chance to, you know, talk to that person, you can ask that person, you know, in conversation. This, this, this goes so deep. Evangelism, the prophetic, I mean, I'm trying to, trying to tell you, you can ask that person, what do you need me to pray for you about? That person is going to tell you. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna compare notes, if you will, what God says and what that person says. Mm -hmm. Even if that person doesn't say perhaps what God says, you can still pray for it. And that will build your ear, that will continue to develop and build your ear. I, I do this quite often. We do this with our students. It's a fun exercise. But you'll be able to see how accurate. This, this will increase your precision, your accuracy with hearing God more clearly, accurately, and then also more frequently. Because you're submitted to the Lord. You're being obedient to the Lord. I said, what color shirt he wants you to wear? It's, it's amazing. Something simple as that. Mm-hmm. So it's a little short exercise. I hope you don't mind me throwing that in there. Uh, I, I, I love it. I really, I love it. I'm, I'm led to do this because I believe all of us wants us to hear God's voice more clearly. Amen. He wants us to give accurate words. He wants us to be precise mm -hmm. and everything like that. And that, and not not only that, but we'll be praying more. This is this is in addition to how we seek God. We're seeking God about the, like you said, Aunt Nessa, the the the, the little things, mm -hmm. the simple things, very mm -hmm. simple. What color shirt do you want me to wear? Is it perhaps shoes or dress socks, whatever. Mm -hmm. See that person with the same color on, just begin to pray for him, ask the Lord if he would give you a word for that person. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're stuck at home, someone asked a question. If you're stuck at home, you could perhaps look on social media to spot people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know, I'm glad you said that, Danielle. Um, Pastor Danielle, because um, what I started doing was on social media, I, I would see a picture and I would ask the Lord, Lord, what kind of lifestyle does this person have? Mm. <laughs> I, I'm crazy like that. I just do stuff like that, right? And, and, and then after that, I'll listen to the Lord. I'll wait for the Lord. And then after that, literally people's photos literally mm. communicate what kind of lifestyle this person has. And it's not judging. I said, Lord, by the Spirit, tell me what kind of lifestyle this person has. And the Lord will show me what kind of lifestyle. I mean, and the crazy thing is I can identify witches. Before, yeah. You know, it's crazy because I see witches and next thing you know, I go to their pictures and I see all sorts of, you know, those, those crystal balls and stuff like that mm -hmm. and all this paraphernalia. And so, you know, if you're on social media and you have it, you know, you can do that as well if, you, if you're unable to leave your home. Or you can ask the Lord, what is the news going to be about today? What yes. is your forecast mm -hmm. if you're yes. home? Watching the news, Lord, tell me what's going to go on in Philadelphia so I can pray for it and then watch the news and God will confirm it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. I, I want to I want to jump Pastor in and, and say this real quick. Oh, somebody had a question? I had a question, Pastor Vanessa. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I know recently the Lord has been speaking to me. Um, but before that, God has been uh, uh, challenging me in my prayer life even even greater, you know. 
I've seen a lot of uh, wonderful results. Same time, the enemy was fighting me as well as far as, you know, fleshly, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, or, you know. No, it's not really necessary, but, but when you're walking with God, you got to just, you know, forget about all that because you want to do hear him, but you got to continue to pray. You got to ask him to lead you and guide you and direct you. And so that, that's, that's been my seeking so far during this pandemic. It's, it's, it's like, you know, uh, Prophet is not he's hearing, seeking his voice, but hearing him as well. But by increasing my prayer life, you know, developing that even more after all I've been through and everything like that, I, you know, I, I just gave it a more, um, a higher priority more than ever. And thank you. It was a wonderful lesson. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I know what it was. Um, Bishop, before you close this out, um, one of the things that was really, um, heavy on my spirit when I was preparing this was um, wanting to really stress how important it was to hear God because there's so many things, as I said before, going on around us and there's so many things to come. Um, if you've been paying attention to um, the experts and, and I've been watching the news and, and listening to certain, certain people, um, and so my prayers have been really kind of shifting because we already know that there's another wave of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the Lord had been, been um, sharing with me was about to begin to pray for a less severity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, 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 and I've been seeing these large gatherings and people out because they've gotten comfortable now that things are opening up and they're not taking precautions. And so we have to be able to hear God. That's why I said earlier that we have to pray about what we do and where we go mm -hmm. and not uh, um, put ourselves in, in positions where we can be affected or infected. But it's, it's really in hearing God and knowing how to hear him so we can and pray about things that are coming because this pandemic is not over and there are other things that are going to be happening uh, in the earth that we have to begin to pray for. So as you hear God, you know, be very clear about what you're hearing. And if the Lord just tells you something like Prophet Donnie said about a person or if you hear something on the news clearly, really begin to pray about it, really begin to decree over it because God is alerting you because your ears are open for a reason. And so some of the stuff that is being prophesied that is still to come, we can lessen the severity of it because we hear God clearly and we hear God intelligently and we know how to pray against some things. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor V. Um, thank you for the teaching tonight. Amen. Um,